my honor to introduce you, uh, KS, Dr. KS Saravana Vassan, Vice President of Talent Development at Omega Healthcare Management Services. KS has 30 years experience as an HR leader and has been with Omega for the past six. When we first met in 2017, KS was looking for an innovative partner who could help fulfill his vision for leadership development within the company. Essentially, he imagined developing a pipeline of leaders who would be identified not only based on past performance, but also on their future potential. He was curious about the unexpressed potential that was lying in the organization and how to measure it and then how to further realize it. So that was a challenge that, you know, we are looking at uh, different tools in the market, which could really give us those insights in terms of identifying that spark and potential in the organization and then groom them for, you know, the future leaders. Mm -hmm. I think uh, this was one of the comprehensive tools that, uh, you know, uh, we saw in the market and then we just partnered uh, with you guys and then today we are. And I think uh, that's the reason we are here to share the success story so that our fellow HR fraternity gets benefit out of this. You spoke about uh, Omega growing um, quickly. Can you just give us a sense of those numbers? Like so uh, today, currently, you know, we are 15,000 plus uh, globally. Uh, we have, we are spread uh, in India, Philippines, and uh, we have an office, uh, sales office in the US. Uh, predominantly the delivery happens out of Manila and in India. 30% uh, is the growth that, you know, we are, you know, looking at and uh, what is really important for us also, not only the headcount, uh, we also need, uh, you know, leaders uh, who could also think, uh, you know, of non-linear growth, right? So growing that when we are 4,000, 10,000 is much higher uh, than growing, you know, uh, when we are 15,000. You know, did this survey for, like Mark said, um, the Bantu, uh, we call them as the first time leaders and uh, moving up to the, you know, uh, the leaders of the organization. Uh, I think like it was close to uh, 700 people who have taken the survey. The, it gave us a lot of insights, right? So you can see there is trustworthiness, getting things done, self-leadership, inventiveness, employee engagement and customer orientation. So one great insight that it gave us was, you know, I think we need to improve this, uh, you know, the quotient of, uh, you know, getting things done. Right. While we are talking about that, uh, you know, we also saw what what's the what could be the reason for this, right? Uh, I need to understand the, you know, the culture. So what sort of culture we have in the organization? I just want to make sure everyone understands that the arrow is uh, on the yellow, which is indication of where the organization was when we measured them in 2017. So, so the, the yellow rational based management was kind of what characterized the organization at that time. And what KS is saying is that, you know, the getting things done was starting to slow down. Their ability to innovate was starting to slow down. And then he could see that moving into the blue, so having more of that open, honest conversation, feeling empowered, sense of ownership, closer collaboration, the, the, the kind of environment that they wanted to create to stimulate innovation again and to, and to start getting the best out of their people. So what we did was like, we took uh, two important things for, you know, the leadership is uh, building trust, uh, trust versus control and uh, the collaboration, right? These are something that, you know, we thought that is really important for us to you know, drive uh, as, as an organization. Mm -hmm. The other way of looking at this, uh, you know, we have this data with us in front of us uh, with people's strengths and uh, how do we leverage that in terms of, you know, reorganizing the, uh, you know, the, the team, right? So the insight that we got is, you know, we need to let uh, the operations, you know, do the operations, right? And we need to uh, give them that space, uh, you know, to do, uh, you know, uh, they serve the customers. And Early 2020, um, uh, we decided it was time 
to rerun a full assessment on the full organization. So again, to measure what has been the impact of, of this work, right? What has been the impact? And um, the next slide I'm going to bring up shows the, the change in scores um, amongst these client specific teams, right? The client enablement teams that you spoke about. So part of that reorganization. I'm sure the, uh, the impact is not only that people were able to engage the clients uh, more deeply, uh, they, were, they were able to be a bridge between our, you know, the operations and the customer. And that is all helped in terms of, you know, bringing this and actually you could see the scores going up, uh, you know, in the, in the team, you know, before uh, 2017, uh, in 2017, in 2020, after restructuring, the capability of the team, you know, the potential of the team has really improved. You could see that, uh, you know, the point, uh, point four, um, there could be many programs that we could do, how people can be more collaborative, right? So um, it's difficult for people to go learn how to be more collaborative and then come and then be collaborative, right? Uh, so this, re this sort of restructuring, automatically the collaboration started increasing. You mentioned the, the business growth. Um, so these are, these are some of the key numbers, right? The, the business yeah. generated by new clients going up 30% between these two, these yes. two leads and business amongst existing clients going up 70%.